One famous uh, management writer said that culture eats strategy for lunch every day. And so that points out the fact that when you're in the real world leading organizations, the culture is going to constrain you or it's going to enable you. Uh, and culture is underestimated only at your peril. Basically, to me, the easiest way to sum up organizational culture is it's how things are done around here. Think about a team you've been on or a workplace you've been in. How often have you heard words to the effect of that's just how things are done around here? And so that helps you see what the organizational culture is. It can, culture can either be a wonderful thing or it can be an incredibly negative thing, which is to say a place with a bad culture is going to be very difficult to accomplish strategic uh, objectives and goals. So let me give you some examples of some positive cultures. Uh, the entrepreneurial culture is the one that the textbook writes about. Uh, I actually prefer to talk more about a high performance culture, and that's what you see at Amazon. And Amazon points out the pros and the cons of high performance cultures. And so you see a high performance culture is often affiliated too with a lot of sports teams. Can do spirit, no excuses. Uh, we take a lot of pride in what we accomplish. Uh, that tends to be a very positive organizational culture. Here's the reality of organizational cultures. If you uh, start an organization, one of the greatest privileges you have is to shape the organization culture. And it's not that you put something out on a piece of paper, it's just how you do things on a daily basis. When you come in as a leader, a new leader, you have an opportunity to influence that culture, but I have to tell you, strong cultures are hard to change unless there is, um, everybody recognizes things need to change. As a strategic leader, you're always working on the culture. Let me give you another one of my Air Force examples. When I uh, stepped into a new job, I had come in from, from a different base, so I was new to the base, and they brought me a problem. Um, this is, I was stationed in northern Japan. We had a couple of airplanes that had flown to uh, South Korea on a trip. And the pilot called back to the base and said, I have a problem. There is a small piece of paper about that big that is missing. And I think it maybe went down into the engine. Well, I was flying the F-16 at the time, uh, commanding an F-16 unit, a, a group level. This is i had been a squadron commander, and then i had been promoted to be a group commander, where now the squadron commanders in the flying organization worked for me. And they came to me and said, what do you want us to do? So here's the problem. That airplane only has one engine. What's the chances that a little piece of paper has gotten stuck somewhere in that engine that operates at thousands of degrees um, that's going to create a problem for that engine? Mm, not very likely. Also, if I send somebody, or I'm going to have to send somebody to inspect the engine to make sure that little piece of paper isn't stuck somewhere in that engine where we don't want it to be, it's going to take me about two days to get them there because I have to fly them commercially and there's no direct flights. Uh, I have to get tickets. I have to send them with their tools. Can't send one person because it's multiple disciplines that have to inspect the engine. And uh, it's going to cost me several thousand dollars. So what do you think I chose to do? I sent the two guys, accepted the airplane being grounded for several days while they did the inspection. Because I can't afford as the new boss not to say, we're going to follow the book. We're going to be a very safety conscious organization. That was one of my first opportunities to set the culture. A great example of a high performance culture is Amazon. <clears throat> now, if we were in, in the classroom, I would be, <clears throat> excuse me, clicking on those links and showing you videos about Amazon uh, because I think that Jeff Bezos is frankly one of the most fascinating leaders that's on the world stage right now in the business arena. Here are some aspects of the Amazon culture. Customer centric. One of, the, one of the things about Amazon is they do some really surprising things, like they reduce prices when no one is pushing them to, although I would argue that's a very good 
uh, business uh, practice anyway. It's very frugal. Um, if you hear about Google and Facebook and ping pong tables and free food and all that, Amazon does none of that. It says we try to spend as little as we can on ourselves. It's very data driven. And if you think about it, they have the opportunity to be because they have a chance to see what you buy, how long you linger on the page, what you buy with another uh, products. <clears throat> so they are very data driven in their approach, which when you know a little bit about Jeff Bezos, he's a brilliant guy, was a top student, graduated with Princeton with degrees in computer science, in mathematics. His first job out of college was on Wall Street. He was one of the people that, that brought quantitative, high-speed quantitative trading uh, into the stock play. So he's a very data-driven guy as a person, and he manages his company like that in a very data-driven perspective. On the downside, though, it is an extremely high-performance culture, and uh, some people have likened it to working in a gladiator environment. So uh, expectations are extremely high. Um, he is not very nice in meetings som sometimes. If you say something that's stupid, uh, he's not afraid to tell you that that was stupid. Uh, so it, it's a, it can be a tough place to work, but people who are really sharp, that are really good uh, at executing, who love new ideas, they really thrive in that environment. And his perspective is Amazon's not for everybody. And this is at the at the, the white collar ranks. Obviously, it's a little bit different uh, out there in the fulfillment centers. But he really makes no apologies. Their culture got a lot of negative attention several years ago. And when you listen, and his response was, A, we don't think some of the things that were written up in the press ever happened that way. And B, we make no excuses for the fact that we have high standards and hold people to them. And I think you could argue, even as we go through this coronavirus crisis today, what's one of the companies that's executing, that's able to get things done, who's still getting stuff out of their warehouses, who's innovating? It's Amazon. And I think that has to do with their culture. How do you change cultures? Well, I've already told you my one little story about being an Air Force person. You always, as a leader, are communicating values, even when you don't think you're communicating values. When you're trying to change a culture, you have to be very clear about why it needs to change, and you have to be very intentional. You have to celebrate changes. Sometimes you have to move people out who um, aren't embracing the new change. The point is, is you can never stop as a senior leader working on culture. So in the Diller College as the dean, I consider myself to be a senior leader. I have a lot of discretion over how things happen. Uh, but I always try to reinforce the culture. And to me, I try to promote a very positive uh, culture between the faculty and the staff. And I talk about the fact that we're excellent teachers, we're competent researchers and we're great colleagues. I'm always emphasizing we get along, we like each other, we're positive, we're here for the students, we're all about student success. That's the culture that I'm always trying to reinforce in the Dillard College. Now ethics is a part of that and that gets down to that basic thing of let's do the right thing. The textbook does a good discussion of this but I want to, to put some nuance to it. You want to, yes, have a clear code, but typically when it comes to that ethics code, the shorter the better. And the reason is, if you have a long code, it starts, you start to develop a lawyerly culture, which is, or a lawyerly mindset, which is, okay, this is the way we have to do it, which is opposed to what? This is the way we want to do it, or this is the way that we think is the right way. Now, the danger is, in an organization, only a few people need to be unethical to have a really bad impact on the company. So, like I said, you have to make it explicit. You have to talk about we are an ethical organization. We do the right thing. What I put in here, it's a balancing act. When you put in controls to ensure that we do the right thing, a lot of times that brings out the worst in people and it actually stimulates unethical behavior. You know, for example, travel reimbursements. 
it's a balancing act. You don't want it to be so draconian uh, that it's impossible for anybody to abuse it because what will happen is people will find ways to abuse it. And then, as the boss, you have to be very conscious about walking ethically. Now, how many of you have cheated while you've been a student? If you have, forgive yourself for that, but you have to resolve you're not going to do it again. Because if you're carving on your, your ethics and your integrity now, guess what? It isn't going to get any easier going forward. If you want a reputation as an ethical individual, you got to start now, and you got to be very zealous about it. And then as a strategic leader, you have to be very careful of the reward systems that you design. Uh, I know the people in the local Wells Fargo Bank, I think they're wonderful people. So I have nothing against the people locally about Wells Fargo. The reward systems they set up to cross sell their products several years ago that they're still, you know, they got in trouble for it still years ago and the negative re uh, ramifications are still coming out. It was just crazy. It's predictable that if you incentivize people to cross sell your products a lot and to get customers to open new accounts, there's going to be a lot of fraudulent accounts open, which is exact, exactly what uh, doom them. So it's something that you have to be very conscious of. In the last video, we're going to talk about this idea of top management team and management turnover.